Hey guys, this is Josh from Active Tours here to show you one of my all-time favorite places, Lake Tahoe. Just a 45-minute drive from Reno, Nevada, two hours from Sacramento, four hours from San Francisco, this outdoor wonderland has something for everyone. Let's get started. Number one, skiing and snowboarding. Circling Lake Tahoe, there are 15 alpine ski resorts that all have their unique draws. Here's a few. Squall Valley was home to the 1960 Winter Olympics, and they have an Olympic museum that you can visit in the winter or in the summer. Heavenly boasts the highest elevation in Lake Tahoe, the biggest vertical drop, and the ability to ski in two different states, California and Nevada. Often overlooked, Diamond Peak has incredible views at around half of the price of the other top resorts. It's not the greatest for beginners with two pretty lame green slopes. Sierra at Tahoe is a local favorite and has some fantastic tree skiing and plenty of beginner routes for the whole family to enjoy. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite ski resort is in Lake Tahoe. Number two, Emerald Bay. Emerald Bay is a sheltered teardrop of an inlet that is surrounded by forested hills and glacier carved mountains. The water is shallower than the rest of Lake Tahoe. That in combination with the crystal clear water gives it its emerald color. If you want to make your way down a steep one mile trail to the beach, you can explore Vikings Home, a fantastic example of Scandinavian architecture. My favorite thing to do down here is to rent kayaks or stand up paddle boards and head over to Fennet Island to explore the tea house and the surrounding park. It's an extremely popular place with very limited parking on weekends so be careful parking along the road and in the parking lot. Number three, boating. So one of the best ways to explore the largest lake in the Sierra Nevada is by boat. And whether you decide to explore on a tour like the MS Dixie or rent jet skis or get some friends together and rent your own private boat, exploring this 191 square miles of pristine water of Lake Tahoe is amazing. Now just remember to pack out all of your trash and support nonprofits like Keep Tahoe Blue to preserve this lake for generations to come. Number four, the Rubicon Trail. The Rubicon Trail is my absolute favorite trail in all of Lake Tahoe. It starts at DL Bliss State Park and ends at Emerald Bay. This is a 12.3 mile one-way trail, so if you don't park two cars at either end, you're going to have to do 24.6 mile round trip. Did I lose you? It's okay. A lot of people don't do the whole trail. Some people just go to Emerald Bay and go back. Some people go all the way. If you have a few hours, I recommend going to DS Bliss Park, exploring the first few miles of the trail, and walking along the water. It provides stunning views at just about every step of this trail. A fantastic side trip is hiking up to see the old lighthouse, but more on that a little later. Number five, the Truckee River. In the 15 plus years of exploring the Tahoe Basin in the warm summer months, not once have I skipped floating the Truckee River. That includes once floating the river with a one day old broken shoulder blade. I'm telling you, this is not to be missed. You can rent a large raft from a few different outfitters, but I recommend you buying an inner tube and floating down the river like a local. You can park a car at each end of the float, and if you only have one car, you can call an Uber at the restaurant to take you back. Just remember to get out of the river at the restaurant. You don't want to float past the restaurant. The rapids get way too big and dangerous. Number six, Sand Harbor. Sand Harbor is in Nevada and is perfect for the lazy days along the shores of Lake Tahoe. Two of my nephews flew out to see me a while back and we went all over the place. Yosemite, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Lake Tahoe, and this was one of their favorite spots. Jumping off the rocks and relaxing in the sun is what this place is all about. It's a perfect spot to go stand up paddle boarding and kayaking as well. I've even seen people go scuba diving in the cold waters of Lake Tahoe, which is pretty awesome. I can't wait to do that one day. It's a very popular place, so parking is very tricky. So make sure you arrive early. Number seven, mountain biking the Flume Trail. One of the most famous mountain bike trails in all of California is called the Flume Trail. And my friends have been trying to get me to go mountain biking for years, and they finally convinced me. The trail starts at Spooner Lake, and it was slow going at first. You have to climb about a thousand feet of elevation in the first four miles. Then you head down to Marlette Lake, 
and here it's just a beautiful pristine lake. The part just past the first view of Marlette Lake was the only technical part of the whole mountain biking trail. The rest of the trail was fairly easy, uh, with a caveat I would say. Uh, if you haven't been mountain biking before, I would say this is probably not the best first trail for you. It has crazy vertical exposure and someone close to me has gone over the trail edge. Now, the views are spectacular as you can see. Uh, you definitely should be walking your bike in some places of this trail. That being said, man, these views are amazing. Probably some of the best in all of Lake Tahoe, so I highly recommend it. You can even hike the trail from the bottom up. Either way, I would do that. Uh, it's a fantastic trail. I'm so happy that I did it. Number eight, DL Bliss State Park. I've already mentioned this park before as being the start of the Rubicon Trail, but there's so much to do in the park, it deserves its own spot on this list. The beach is secluded and fantastic, and there are miles of hiking. Now, as either part of the Rubicon Trail or as a standalone hike all to itself, the old lighthouse is not to be missed. And the DS Bliss Campground is by far my favorite in all of Lake Tahoe Basin. You can also search and hike out to the Balancing Rock in the park. Number 9, Fallen Leaf Lake. Now, Fallen Leaf Lake was another glacier-carved lake. However, this glacier stopped just short of connecting it with Lake Tahoe. If it had, it would have been a very similar inlet to Emerald Bay. Now this quiet mountain town community has loads to offer including boat rentals, beaches, fishing, and it has one of my favorite campgrounds in all of the Lake Tahoe Basin. Now be careful driving back into town as the road is very narrow, so take your time and be respectful of the locals. Number 10, Cave Rock. Looking for the perfect sunset spot close to South Lake Tahoe, Cave Rock is probably your best bet. Be sure to arrive early and read the posted signs to find good places to park. This short 0.8 mile stroll out and back leads you up to a huge rock that they once bored a hole into to create the road, giving this rock the name Cave Rock. From its high vantage point, you can see the massive size of Lake Tahoe and the surrounding basin. It's a pretty cool spot. Number 11, rock climbing. The Tahoe Basin is surrounded by peaks of granite bliss, offering a lifetime of climbing and exploring. Trad climbing is definitely the name of the game here, and the notable areas include Donner Summit, Lover's Leap, and Wilford's Canyon. Most of the climbing here is done well above 6,000 feet, so the season can be short due to the snow-covered mountains. Big props to my friend Stephen Denester for sending me these photos of climbing around Lake Tahoe Basin. If you're looking to get in touch with a climbing coach or a photographer up in Lake Tahoe, check him out on Instagram, send like a sloth with underscores in between. Check him out. Number 12, the Tahoe Rim Trail. The Tahoe Rim Trail is a 170 mile through hike that forms a loop around the Lake Tahoe Basin. Hiking the entire hike might be out of reach for many of us, but at the same point, doing parts of the hike is certainly going to give you an appreciation for those that do the entire through hike. We decided to go mountain biking to explore the section called Tahoe Meadows to Tunnel Creek. Since you are hiking or biking on the rim trail, it provides you with spectacular views of not only Lake Tahoe Basin, but also of the surrounding valleys and mountains. And if you do decide to bike, you can only do certain sections of the trail, and some have very specific days. This section that we did, you can only ride them on even numbered days. Keep that in mind if you want to go hiking as well, and you want to avoid the mountain bikers. Number 13, Heavenly Village. Now, by far the busiest part of all of Lake Tahoe is South Lake Tahoe, and one of the main attractions is Heavenly Village. This is truly a family-friendly place. It has something for everyone. Now, if you want to get alpine views without going skiing or snowboarding, you can jump on the Heavenly Gondola for epic views of the Lake Tahoe Basin and the surrounding mountains. The area has a few great food options as well. I like Base Camp Pizza and the Driftwood Cafe. They're some of my favorite places to eat. Number 14, the Talak Estates. Now, a century ago, the Talak Estates were home to the grandest resort in the world, quote, and home to San Francisco's socially elite families. 
Their homes are now serving as a historic site for thousands of people to enjoy during the summer months. The Tahoe Heritage Foundation supports a variety of preservation and restoration and education projects and programs around the Lake Tahoe Basin. Now please go and support them uh, to preserve this for future generations. Number 15, Zephyr Cove. With lodging, cruises, snowmobiling, horseback riding, beaches, dining, endless activities, Zephyr Cove has something for everyone. I like parking just along the road and picking a nice cove away from the crowds. If you're up for some jet skiing, taking a cruise, grabbing some food, or just heading down to the marina, this place is perfect for you and your family. Okay guys, so that's my list of the best things to do in Lake Tahoe. I know I skipped a bunch of uh, highly prized hikes to waterfalls and and such and you know I skipped all of that only because I was there during Labor Day weekend one of the busiest times in all of Lake Tahoe and all of the the waterfalls were dry at that point and so I don't want to put that on the list and make people disappointed when they go and try to see these waterfalls in the end of summer anyways this is my list. I'm Josh from Active Tours. I hope you guys enjoyed this list of the best things to do in Lake Tahoe. Let me know what I missed. Put that in the description below. Hit the thumbs up and comment below if you guys like this video. My next video is going to be about Hollywood, California, and the best adventure things to do in Hollywood. And I know you guys are probably wondering what is there possibly to do in Hollywood that's adventurous, but let me tell you, there's tons. I can't wait to show you guys my secret spots in Hollywood.